Um, and others have suggested that maybe the mind may simply be a separate, undiscovered scientific entity to the brain, a bit like how you would describe mass or gravity in physics as being something on their own that can't be reduced down, that maybe the mind is a separate entity in its own right. And Baram al uh, is uh, in lectures at the Sorbonne in France, or had lectured in France, and um, Sir John Eccles is a Nobel Prize winner I mentioned to you, who kind of fall into that category. So just to finish off here, I think where it becomes significant for us, though, is and I'll leave with this slide here. And um, the work that we do has a lot of implications for saving lives, minimizing brain damage, improving outcomes for our patients, but also a, a byproduct of what we do, which is studying the brain and mind during cardiac arrest. So that maybe we can answer once and for all this dichotomous sort of stuff that's been going on between Plato and Aristotle, and now within scientists, so that we have skeptics and believers and all this sort of stuff, you know. Which is that if Aristotle's view and those who believe in that the mind is somehow produced from brain cells is correct, what I would expect is that when you die and we can, the brain shuts down and we can demonstrate that, if indeed that is the case, then your mind and consciousness should also dissipate. It should, you, should, you should lose it. You should not have true awareness and consciousness when that is happening. So it's a bit like a light bulb. You know there's a light around. You just can't figure out where it's coming from. So if you stop the light bulb here, switch, turn off the switch, then you should lose that. If when you turn off the switch, i.e. you turn off the brain, you don't get any blood flow into it, people truly have consciousness. They really are able to see things as they claim they can do. Then you have to accept that maybe Plato and others may have been correct. So far, we don't know. We've set up a study called the Aware Study, and we're trying to investigate it. And I think the key thing that we can do, objectively, is to use uh, some kind of hidden target. And so what we've got is we've installed, uh, starting here in England, uh, but also now in the States and, and a couple of other countries too, pictures that are placed above the head of the bed in areas where patients may die and be resuscitated. And the idea is that we have an image that's facing up towards the ceiling. And so if we get, say, 500 people who all supposedly die and come back and all that sort of stuff, and they all claim they saw Dr. Smith and they have all these incredible stories and they can describe what was happening, and we can demonstrate that it was happening when they're going through cardiac arrest and the brain is shut down, then supposedly, if they really are out of body, they should see that picture. If, on the other hand, it's just an illusion, it's a trick of the mind, which it may well be, and I suspect it will turn out to be, then we would expect no one to be able to see those pictures. The problem, of course, is if only one or two people describe it, then you, know, you have a problem because maybe some nurse you know, went up on a ladder late at night, and we have had these things happen. People are very curious. Never tell people, don't go and look at something, because you know they will. <laughs> so they'll go up on ladders, they're leaning over, you're like, what, what are you doing up there? <laughs> oh, I was just uh, having a scratch, you know? So if you get one or two, you know, it's difficult. But if you get hundreds of cases, then I think it adds a lot of evidence to that, to that theory. And so this is what we're currently engaged in. We've got about 700 people who've gone through our, our hospitals, had a cardiac arrest, been discharged home. We're, trying to, we're planning to interview them now to find out what they experienced and to see if they saw any, haven't had any out-of-body experience, whether they saw these pictures or not. Um, and if and they do turn out to be positive in the future, you know, if, if, if obviously we do this and no one sees the pictures, and I think we can stop and say we, don't, we haven't disproven it, but it's most likely that it's just some kind of illusory process. If, on the other hand, they do describe them, then I think the next step is to have some kind of computer panel with a random image generator that changes the picture every five minutes. So even if a nurse does go up on a ladder and look at it, it doesn't matter. The patient won't see that. So these are things that are sort of in the works. And um, just to say, we also study the brain during that time. So we're trying to observe what happens to the brain to the patients. This is a case of somebody who had a cardiac arrest. And you can see their electrical activity came down. Um, and again, I'm just going to stop. <coughs> And just to say, before I finish, here's a little cartoon I think is very funny. When I first started doing this, this is about 1998, 1999, something like that, 2000, this came out. This is probably when uh, Frank, uh, Chris uh, met me. So you have to tell me if this is correct. But this came out in our local paper in Southampton. This is supposed to be me, I think, many years in the future, saying, no, I don't want to come in. I'm just researching out-of-body experiences for Southampton General Hospital. Unfortunately, they were right about the hair. I lost most of it and the tummy did come out. Hopefully the nose won't become quite so big as I get older. But anyway, that's basically me not going in. 
And then this, I think, is hilarious too, and I think it really sort of explains what we're doing. <laughs> so for that, I'm just going to thank Chris for inviting me tonight. Sorry it got a bit rushed. I, it took me a little while to explain the background to you. But these are the hospitals that are currently working with us here in England, and these are the hospitals that are working with us currently in, in the States, and there's one in Vienna as well. And I hope that we can release a preliminary set of results in about a year's time. Uh, of the, you know, those six or seven hundred people who have come through the hospitals. So hopefully we can come back and discuss this again in the future. But thank you again, and I hope I explained things very well to you. Thank you.